Hello. Welcome to a, seg a market segment approach to commercial energy efficiency. This is the third in a series of webinars that PECI is hosting with the goal of providing a forum to come together, share our challenges and learnings, and help to evolve energy efficiency programs. I'm Michelle Tashima, your moderator and webinar organizer. Before we get started, let's take a moment to ensure that everyone is ready and familiar with the webinar control panel. You should see the panel on the right side of your screen. You can submit your questions throughout the webinar using the chat window located near the bottom of the control panel. Note that all phones are automatically muted. If you're experiencing technical difficulties, please submit a question via the chat function on the control panel. Throughout the webinar, we'll ask several polling questions to better understand the points you're interested in as they relate to a market segment approach to programs. Please answer the polling questions in the right sidebar of your screen. With that, let's get started. Today's panelists are Jeremy Littell, Director at PECI, Brenda Hunt, Program Designer at PECI, and Isla Holmshire, Program Manager at Pacific Gas and Electric. Jeremy develops and manages all of PECI's grocery program strategies to align our program offerings with best practices in the industry. Brenda uses her knowledge of energy efficiency programs and the larger industry context to develop customized deployments of PECI's nationally recognized grocery program. And Isla oversees a staff of 20 employees who work with 34 implementers that deliver 50 distinct energy efficiency programs throughout Northern and Central California. Thanks to everyone for joining us today. Now I'll ask Jeremy to begin our presentation. Thank you, Michelle. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, actually good day to all of you folks. Hello, this is Jeremy Leto. So uh, for today, we'll, our conversation will take shape in three parts. First, we will have an overview of market segment approaches, what they look like, when they are useful, uh, and then some key elements that re they require in order to be successful. We will present an example of a market segment approach and then utility perspectives on market segment approaches as well. And then at the end, we will have time to answer your questions. Before we begin, we would like to ask uh, uh, you a question right now. This is our first live polling question that we ask that you answer on the right side of the screen there. So what is your experience with target market segment approaches? Please let us know. While you are mulling that question, uh, we'll give you a little bit of information about PECI so you know who we are. Uh, PECI is an energy efficiency consulting firm. We are a nonprofit, been in business for over 30 years. And uh, one thing particularly interesting about PECI is that we like to solve really thorny problems. As a result of that, we have uh, created several target market programs to identify some of those tricky problems that are out there in the marketplace. We also manage uh, and deliver mass market programs, and we have a full complement of research and development functions underpinned by a strong engineering, software, and marketing team. We operate nationally. So first, what is a market segment approach? Uh, why are they useful? and how are they uh, deployed most effectively. So first, let's look at how energy efficiency often gets done in the marketplace, and we'll take a commercial perspective on this one. In this case, a customer has many choices to, many paths to go down in order to meet their energy efficiency needs. Those paths are defined uh, generally in two categories, either a technology approach, such as a lighting or motors program, or a process approach, such as a new construction or retrocommissioning program path. These paths work very, very well and are very effective in many cases when um, there is a mass market need that can be met. An example of this would be prescriptive lighting, where lots of savings is got through utility programs today. Another way of looking at the market is this one here. Uh, in uh, a commercial programs uh, approach, there may be, for example, some specific sets of measures which are particular to a part of a facility that a customer can pursue. There is often a calculator which will give the customer some insight into what the opportunities are and what kind of savings might show up in their facility. And there are often some case studies particular to that piece of the facility. 
If a customer has additional needs for energy efficiency in their facility, those can be met by the kinds of technology and process approaches that we saw uh, in the last slide. And then here is the way that PECI likes to think about market segment approaches, and it's a holistic kind of perspective. We feel that market segment approaches are most effective when they are a one-stop shop by design and that have approaches and measures that are customized for the specific needs of the market and create the opportunity also for a great customer experience. This kind of a design puts the customer's needs first, and everything as part of the program is shaped to systematically work through all of customers' needs in partnership with all of the critical market actors that are required to get energy efficiency done. The result of this kind of holistic approach to the market, comprehensive design, and careful handling of the customer and their needs over the long term results in a really positive customer experience. And for if you're like me, uh, if I have a positive buying experience, my tendency is to go and have another one. So if that's uh, one perspective on what a customer segment specific approach looks like, why is a customer segment uh, approach uh, a good thing to pursue? Well, there are a couple of really top level criteria that need to be checked. First, um, does a market warrant uh, special attention, yes, when there is a large number of facilities with a large energy savings potential in each facility. There has got to be a big potential out there to warrant such an approach. Then that we also have to identify savings opportunities that are not being gotten through mass market technology-based approaches. The reason that those measures or opportunities may not be got at with a current approach is because there's simply a lack of measures or calculation tools. There is a high level of complexity, uh, technical complexity in facilities that impairs going after those measures. Uh, or there may be a lack of market capacity in contractor or distributor basis to actually deliver energy efficiency products and services to capture the energy efficiency. Some examples of where uh, there are um, sort of gaps often in delivery mechanisms that cannot be addressed through mass market approaches are data centers, grocery stores, and some healthcare facilities. So if, if there is a volume opportunity that's not being served through, the, uh, through mass market approaches, there are also some other reasons to go after uh, a customer segment. Those could include reasons such as increasing participation of certain customer segments or sub-segments, the change in portfolio balance in terms of end use or measure mix, a desire to get more comprehensive projects going in uh, a utility's customer base, or to drive more uh, deeper savings and more capital intensive measures into customers' facilities. A second key reason for bringing market segment approaches aboard is to integrate with existing efforts. Nobody wants to shelve effective programs that are developing lots of savings, but nor do we want to miss savings in customer facilities where there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of opportunity just sort of laying around without a mechanism to capture it. So with careful design, market segment approaches can be brought in to capture savings in facilities that are being left untouched by other approaches. And also, at the same time, if they are comprehensive, they can bring in uh, other measures that may be addressed by existing mechanisms, but maybe has been missed or left behind. <clears throat> there is also a future aspect to market segment approaches. As we described earlier, if a comprehensive approach to a facility looks at all of the different savings opportunities from a process and technology standpoint, and the market approach incorporates all market actors, this creates both a pipeline of opportunity and market traction to deliver those savings, which creates more reliable delivery potential for the future. Low-hanging fruit uh, has two aspects to it. One, we're running out of it. Uh, the mythical linear fluorescent uh, is going the way of the dodo. So we're going to have to find other ways, uh, other kinds of low-hanging fruit. Market segment approaches open our eyes to new energy efficiency opportunities that can be very cost-effective. 
So even as we run out of one kind of low-hanging fruit, we begin to uncover other areas to, uh, to capture that. Last but not least, the holistic approach to the market can create, as I mentioned before, a really excellent customer experience, which then leads to ongoing engagement with customers. In order to be effective, market segment approaches have got to have these four key elements, and they all need to be aligned to the specific needs of the market. First, industry expertise has got to underpin all of these other elements. Success in a market requires an understanding of how the businesses and all the actors work so that all the participants can be motivated to action. With this high level of industry expertise, credibility can be created with all market participants. As an example of the kind of perspectives that have to be had, if you're having a manufacturing uh, or a conversation with a manufacturer, all conversations need to be informed by the manufacturer's focus on process reliability and defect reduction. In data centers, it's all about uptime. If we're talking to retailers, presentation of product and ambiance in the store have to be uh, a common focus in all conversations about energy efficiency as well. Next, there has to be a, the comprehensive engagement that I alluded to earlier. And what this looks like is an engagement of the entire supply chain as well as the customer. All market participants have got to be recruited to the cause of energy efficiency. And this comprehensive engagement has a focus of long-term relationship development. From a marketing and outreach perspective, this, again, the specific motivations of buyers and sellers have got to be addressed. The marketing materials that are deployed have got to look like customer facilities, and customers have to be able to visualize their facilities looking like the marketing materials that you hand them. Uh, outreach has got to demonstrate the business logic of participation for buyers and sellers, and for buyers, energy and non-energy benefits have got to be made really plain. All conversations with market participants have got to demonstrate a high level of fluency and familiarity with the market. You have to speak their language, use their jargon, and have the technical expertise to address the specifics of each customer's facility. Last, there are a couple of kinds of tools required. Because the savings that are available in market segment approaches are often not mass market savings. New approaches have got to be developed for, cap for identifying and quantifying with rigor savings opportunities, and tool development is often required to do that to be able to have a streamlined approach and scale. Second, because you're taking a, a market approach which is comprehensive and a long-term engagement uh, to the market, this is gonna create that pipeline of savings and projects that I mentioned earlier. In order to manage these over the long term, there have got to be engagement tools that allow tracking and driving of these projects forward over the long term so that the savings yield presented in market segments can be mined over the long term. So all in all, market segment approaches offer two key benefits. One, happy customers who keep coming back for more and a deep stock of savings that can be reliably delivered over the long term. So now, we want to offer a second question to you folks to keep us informed about where you are in reference to market segment approaches. Our question is, what challenges do you have or foresee in implementing programs targeted to specific markets? While you consider that question, I want to introduce our next presenter, Brenda Hunt. Brenda is a program designer at PECI who works to develop and continuously improve market segment approaches that fit specific market needs for utilities. Uh, before becoming a program designer, Brenda cut her teeth in the energy efficiency industry by running multiple commercial market segment programs for some of America's largest investor-owned utilities. And so with that, I give you Brenda Hunt. Thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> So I'd like to talk to you about how we developed a grocery target market program. And, but first I'd like to start with why we developed a grocery target market program. So if we'll call the two top criteria 
for identifying an appropriate market segment, we'll remember that the first was volume, and groceries represent a big opportunity for energy savings. They're some of the highest energy intensity commercial facilities in the U.S., and this is borne out by the fact that they have long hours of operation, and of course, they're running refrigeration equipment 24-7. And there's lots of groceries, and they're in every utility service territory. And the second criteria is that it's challenging to reach these customers through mass market or technology-based approaches. That's also true for groceries, because there's a lot of cost-effective energy efficiency solutions available but they're not necessarily addressed by the measures in mass market programs. Additionally, they're pretty technically complex, but there's an opportunity there if you can identify a way to make energy savings calculations manageable because there's some similarities, which includes they all have condensers and compressors and fan motors. So overall, grocery represents a pretty juicy opportunity. But there's some challenges. And this is the real reason that we decided to pursue grocery as a target market segment. It's because we like to address those 30 challenges in the industry. So the first key challenge is that grocers are focused on one thing, and that's selling large volumes of their product. That's a lot like a lot of commercial facilities. What makes grocers different is that they typically have very thin margin, margins, only 1% to 2%. And so getting them to invest that margin is really challenging because they are only usually willing to invest in things that help them sell more groceries. However, with these thin margins, even small reductions on their utility bills can help them realize substantial increase in profits. So you have to figure out a way to speak that message to grocers. Second key challenge is that there's huge diversity in the grocery segment, everything from the general store that's located in the countryside to the large urban state-of-the-art supermarket. So you have to develop compelling messages to reach that whole range of grocers. And then last but not least, the contractors that serve this market are typically focused on keeping the equipment running and making sure that food stays cold. And they often don't even understand how to integrate energy efficiency into their business or implement it. So in order to address these challenges, and tap into that large volume of savings, we developed a market segment approach that we call Energy Smart Grocer. And we developed this approach for a specific set of facilities, which is any facility with commercial scale refrigeration. And then we aggregated a set of measures to, to address the full suite of energy efficiency opportunities in these facilities. And that included lighting, HVAC, food service, but focus mainly on refrigeration because that accounts for about 60% of the energy used in groceries. One important thing to mention is that many of the measures on that list are actually offered through other utility programs, but we aggregated those together in a way that created a one-stop shop for energy efficiency for the customer, especially when you consider we combined grocery-specific retro commissioning and grocery-specific new construction. So as we've completed projects in more than 10,000 stores across about 60 utilities, we found we can deliver to many of the objectives that utilities are looking for when they, do, when they employ a market segment approach. First of all, you can get measures that you can't get anywhere else. In this specific example that you're seeing in this chart, this utility was looking for a high percentage of refrigeration savings that they weren't able to get at before. The second thing is that we reach small and medium businesses. Over half the energy savings that we deliver through this market segment approach tap into local and regional customers. And the other half of the energy savings come from national chains. National chains can also be really challenging to reach through mass market approaches because the decision makers are located hundreds if not thousands of miles outside the territory. And then, in order to facilitate implementation, we've trained over 300 contractors on how to participate in energy-efficient programs and integrate energy efficiency into their businesses. So now I'd like to talk about the four elements of a target market segment approach as we develop them for groceries. The first foundational one is industry expertise. So when we started going after a grocery market segment approach, we recruited former grocers, former contractors, and former energy managers to help train our infield experts 
and the technical aspects of energy efficiency in grocery stores, as well as how to speak to grocers' motivations. These folks are also responsible for training contractors. To address the diversity in the marketplace, we established a team of key account managers, and these folks develop relationships with national decision makers to drive energy efficiency as a focus of their multi-year plans. We have a dedicated engineering team that's deeply knowledgeable about energy efficiency in grocery stores and specifically in the complexities of refrigeration energy efficiency. And then supporting this team, we have an implementation staff. And these folks are not just paper pushers, but they're also trained as experts in the industry and what's required to move projects through. We apply this industry expertise into a holistic market engagement model that engages both the demand side of the market and the supply side. So starting with key accounts, national accounts, these folks are the early adopters of energy efficient technologies and they're the ones that drive the scale that make it possible for local and regional accounts to employ energy efficiency. We also work with associations and associations are really important communities of trust that help you scale your market segment approach and the results in energy efficiency. So an example of how this works, we started working with the Korean American Grocers Association in 2009. And we met with the leader of the Western Washington chapter, who's also a grocer, and we did energy efficient projects in their facility. And they were so pleased with the results, they became an advocate for the market segment approach. And we were, by the end of the year, we were able to deliver 100 projects through that organization. By the end of the following year, we had 200 additional projects. By the end of 2011, we had worked with over 1,200 additional facilities across multiple states. But we know nothing gets done unless you engage the supply side of the market. So as I mentioned before, we train contractors on all aspects of working with the market segment, which includes how to fill out the applications, what to put on the invoices, and of course, how to select energy efficient equipment. Moving on to the supply chain, we work with distributors to make sure the equipment's available. And then we also work with manufacturers. As they develop new technologies, we develop new measures to help facilitate the implementation of that technology in the marketplace. On a one-to-one -one basis, we have a model that we call Inform to Invest, to grow relationships with customers and continuously seed a pipeline of energy efficient savings. It starts with contacting a customer to perform an assessment, delivering an energy savings report, and sitting down with that customer, scope that first project, integrating the opportunities in their facility with their priorities. Something interesting about this informed part, it typically happens in one or two days. And then we keep that momentum going by holding their hand through the entire process providing technical consultation, matching them up with contractors, all the way through receiving the incentive. But we don't stop there because we help them use that incentive and use the energy savings that they realize on their bill to invest in the next set of programs. So this is how we make sure that eight out of 10 customers that we do an assessment complete a project and how six out of 10 customers do multiple projects. How this shows up in a real-world example, I'll let you know that we worked with a four-store chain, and it started with one assessment and one site, and we did a simple project of ash controls and motors. And they were so happy with that project that they invited us to help participate in their large-scale remodel in another store. So we did energy-efficient condensers and compressors. And then they were so happy with that that they decided to do an LED case lighting project across all of their store. And we've been working with that customer continuously over the last six years to implement energy efficiency. It's important that, as Jeremy mentioned, it's important that you support your market segment approach with market-specific materials. So we've developed case studies off of actual projects that show grocers what they could do in their facility. It looks like their facility, and they understand that the energy savings are real. We also use promotions and collateral to make sure we have a very consistent message with all of the market actors that we work with. And then last but not least, at the top of the triangle, remember there were tools for scale. For the Energy Smart Grocer Market Segment Approach, we have developed two tools. One is our Grocer Smart Energy Modeling Software 
that we use to do that comprehensive assessment and deliver the opportunities to the customer. And then we also use a customer database to manage the projects that we're working on with customers, but also to track and leverage that pipeline of energy efficient opportunities to continue to make sure that we realize future savings. So all of these th things come together to deliver our market segment approach for grocery. And now I'd like to ask you our last polling question, which is what markets do you think would benefit from a market segmentation approach? And while you're considering that question, I'd like to introduce Isla Hampshire. Isla oversees the PECI's Energy Smart Grocer Program with Pacific Gas and Electric, as well as about 49 other energy efficiency programs. And with this experience, she's exceptionally qualified to provide insights about market segment approaches from the utility perspective. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today, Isla. Hello, uh, thank you, Brenda and Jeremy. We're just having a little, getting the ball over to our side. Okay, thanks. We just, we're just one more thing to advance the slide. Yes, just click on the presentation. There, we there go. you go. Okay, there we go. Okay, well, thanks, Brenda and Jeremy. Well, some of you on the phone may not be familiar with Pacific Gas and Electric, uh, and known as PG&E here in California. So this slide gives you a visual of the area of California we serve, as well as the diversity of our service area, from the coastal ranges to the warm inland areas. And, you know, in the coastal communities, uh, which includes the Bay Area, where uh, Pacific Gas and Electric is headquartered, we have both urban and suburban uh, housing, uh, compact housing. We have very temperate coastal summer climates, as well as customers that tend to have higher incomes and, of course, higher cost of living here. And then in our inland areas, we have more suburban and rural areas, lots of rural in the PG&E service territory, as well as in, for residential larger homes, and then the hot inland summer climates, which affect, of course, both our residential and business customers and tend to have uh, more of the lower income or lower cost of living in, in that area. And uh, we're proud to say that we provide some of the cleanest energy uh, in the country to our customers. So in this slide, you can see uh, the numbers of customers that we have, and certainly, uh, you know, re we have many residential customers, and uh, and with our business customers, we these are really made up of large and small business. As you can imagine, uh, most of the co uh, probably about three quarters of the customers are our small to medium business customers, and also in our diverse uh, area that we serve. Our customers uh, speak about 88 different languages, so you can imagine that uh, just adds to the complexity that we have. So regarding uh, PG&E's energy efficiency programs and our objectives, so um, you, know, you can imagine that providing programs to such a diverse set of customers with unique energy needs could seem like an unmanageable task. And, and it could be if we didn't do it in a more targeted way that recognizes and understands the complexity of each customer segment and really leverages our industry partners like PECI. So it's important, important for us to meet our energy efficiency targets uh, that uh, support the attainment of statewide initiatives uh, like the strategic plan and also replaces the building or buying of new sources of energy. So energy efficiency programs that are delivered by the utilities under the direction of the CPUC really help create the demand for customers to take action by providing education to our customers, incentives, and also then access to industry professionals. So our, you know, our goal is to provide high quality, comprehensive uh, energy efficiency programs and services to all of our customers. And we do this by understanding our customers' needs, and developing and delivering the right mix of programs for them. So targeting customers by segment and leveraging both our internal workforce along with industry partners really helps to ensure the success. And uh, cost-effective energy efficiency still remains the state's least expensive and most environmental resource, 
So it's really important that we're successful in, in delivering the program. So the benefits of the target market approach, I think many of the things I'm going to say really uh, support what Jeremy and Brenda have talked about. But from the utility, we really see that it really allows us to be much closer to our customers. Customers really trust you more uh, because they know that you understand their business and then you're not going to waste them, their time with providing them with options that may not really fit, fit their needs. And it also helps reduce the cost of providing, you know, the, the right product or service. So there's not a, 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 so we benefit as well by making this a more efficient process. And it ensures uh, adoption of the proven technologies and the, the uh, operational practices. So it's really what the customers want and need. It also helps to nurture our long-term relationships, and I think uh, this was spoke about earlier, and I think that that really is something we found has made a big difference, that the customers, uh, we work with them year after year on projects, and it provides a continual flow of targeted, high-efficient technologies. So as a result, we see installations of specific product, products installed over and over again in customers' facilities in multiple locations. And so this really helps maximize market penetration of a proven technology, and it kind of becomes commonplace. In, in, in the groceries in California, you can see everyone has done it now or everyone is doing it now. So it's really great because it quickly accelerates that adoption. And uh, we learn a lot, too. As we refine uh, our targeting of the markets and customer segments, we gain market intelligence uh, along the way that helps us to continue to identify and to tailor measures or options or solutions for our customers. So um, although we've had great success, there are challenges along the way that, uh, that we need to deal with. And sometimes the technology advancements or, and our customers' needs uh, really keep pushing us to adopt more solutions, uh, especially with technologies coming fast and furious these days. So as utilities, you know, we're risk averse and we want to make sure that any new technology or solution that we recommend will actually deliver the benefits that we promote or promise to our customers. So this is always a little a challenge for us there. So the process to allow like new measures that have been tested and proven into the programs can sometimes take longer than we would like, but um, and it may even lead to customers you know being dissatisfied or losing interest or leading to lost opportunities. So this is something that we struggle with constantly and and continue to improve on. But I think it's just something that as uh, both with our regulators and with the utility that, that we're wanting to uh, make that time frame a little shorter. Also coordination, and I saw that was something that was mentioned on the surveys that, uh, that were the quick surveys that were done. Um, there are a wide variety of programs offering energy solutions, um, energy efficiency solutions to the customers. And so we do need to coordinate with the other programs who, who may uh, be offering programs that are more technology focused. I think uh, this was mentioned before as well. And those are fine programs for customers and, and sometimes customers, you know, this is one way they get interested in energy efficiency by doing that. But one of the things we get concerned about is that we may lose the opportunity to get to the more comprehensive, deeper savings. Because sometimes customers think, oh, if I changed out all my lighting, I've done all I can do. So I think it's really important to, you know, for us to step back and think about how the targeted approach really does help us to get to the deeper savings. And with utilities, uh, uh, you saw our service territory, you know, customer equity, both geographic as well as size, is really something that is always a challenge for us. So we may be getting more demand from some of our targets than we are able to actually support because of the fact that we need to balance that with our equity. So I mentioned that the California utilities uh, have been uh, involved in energy efficiency for quite some time. In fact, over 30 years we've been providing education incentives and services for our customers. And the relationships with our customers have really been developed and nurtured over a long period of time. As we build the trust, uh, we're able to really then introduce in, uh, new solutions to the customers that will, re that will result in deeper savings. 
And recently, PG&E, along with the SCE and uh, so, uh, Southern California Edison, excuse me, and Duke Energy received the Edison Electric Institute 2012 National Key Accounts Customer Service Award for outstanding customer service. And I mention this just to support some of the things that Jeremy and Brenda said earlier, which is about that these chain accounts are really a key area that this uh, type of activity really works well. So there were over 700 votes were cast by large chain accounts uh, that you know focus on you know customer segments with multiple locations, including national brands like Walmart, Best Buy, Marriott, etc. And um, so these are customers who benefited by this approach. So they are the ones that, that voted these utilities had outstanding customer service because of, I think, this relationship, this ongoing relationship we have with them. And in presenting the award, um, uh, Tom Kuhn from the Edison Electric Institute said, the electric companies and individuals honored today understand that at the heart of every successful business relationship is loyalty. To build loyalty means building human relationships and this requires constant and committed efforts, and these companies and representatives have done that, and they've done it by never stopping to help make their customers more energy efficient, more productive, and ultimately more profitable. So I think that whole linkage, uh, the approach that we're talking about today, which leverages the strength and relationships of the utility representatives who deal with customers on all of their utility issues, like service, billing, and energy efficiency, and then when you leverage energy experts, companies like PECI, who come in who provide the solution for the customer, really help them put it into play, then it really creates a win-win for all of us. So that's why I wanted to be here today and just support the kinds of activities that, uh, that we're describing. So this slide is a brief recap of the success of this particular program, the Energy Smart Grocer Program, and the target approach that we've been using in the PG&E service territory. And what I find most impressive about this slide is really the, on the last line where it says measures per facility. I think this really points out that uh, customers have not just done the lighting, just done the refrigeration, they really look deeper and that, we're, that you're seeing what we're all looking for, which is the, the deeper savings per each facility. So in closing, uh, I'd like to say at PG&E, we find you know, targeting segments is efficient and smart for both the utility and for our customers, and yields success for all parties. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Jeremy. Thank you, Isla. So a few closing thoughts, and then we will get to your questions. You've been sending in some excellent questions, folks. Thank you for that. Please keep them coming. Um, in closing, uh, as uh, Isla mentioned, you know, good for all parties, right? Good for the utility, um, and especially good for the customer. And in, in these days of, um, you know, a lot of turmoil in our uh, energy industry. Uh, Putting the customer experience first can be very, very beneficial um, in lots of different ways. Uh, market segment approaches can produce very high volume savings and produce that savings reliably over the long term, which again, uh, in, in uh, challenging economic times, can be very beneficial to take some of the risk out of uh, portfolio delivery. Integration of energy efficiency programs into existing portfolios can, uh, can uh, magnify the investment that has already been made in energy efficiency portfolios while leveraging existing relationships and uh, existing customer momentum in the marketplace to get yet more savings out of those customers without uh, causing any program overlap. And then last but not least, Market segment approaches build long-term market capacity for energy efficiency because by design they are, uh, they are creating that long-term awareness on both the demand and the supply sides of the market about the business case for energy efficiency, which then diffuses uh, more broadly out into the marketplace. Market traction is also created, and um, last but not least, the business logic becomes in cemented into the minds of market participants so that there is high level of enthusiasm uh, in an ongoing way for energy efficiency. So that concludes our presentation. 
and uh, in front of us we have the names of the folks who presented today. And now we will take some of your questions that you have sent in to us, and we welcome again more of those questions. So for the first one, I want to um, I want to address one of the polling questions. You folks indicated that in terms of the challenges that you face in um, putting market segment approaches in place, the, there were five choices. Integration with existing programs, selecting markets, uh, identifying customer motivations, um, lack of budget, and then uh, the identification of energy efficiency uh, opportunities. Um, the top uh, the top response there was, not surprisingly, integration with existing programs. And um, that's not surprising to me because every uh, utility in the United States uh, just about um, has energy efficiency programs that they have uh, embedded in their organization, traction in the marketplace, and, and they've made substantial investments in, just like their uh, wires and poles. So. Um, the key we have found in integrating with existing, um, with existing programs is to understand up front, once you've targeted a particular market segment, and we can talk about that one as well, once a particular market segment has been targeted, to really explore how that market segment is being touched now um, by existing programs, what kind of traction with specific end uses and measures uh, has been got, and then where more traction is desirable, and then what's the level of effort required in terms of outreach, engineering, systems um, to get to the level of engagement you would like from that market segment. So really, a lot of homework is required in advance, and research is required in advance to determine um, uh, how to best integrate uh, with existing programs. Um, a related question that we have here is, how can I determine what target markets are good opportunities in my area? Well, an excellent question, right? Um, and the answer to that is, <laughs> it depends on what data you have about your market and, um, and, of course, what's been done in it and how current your data is. So, you know, often good original data can be got from market potential studies or market uh, potential assessments. Um, and that can provide a survey level of data to sort of ballpark where there might be opportunities in terms of quantity of facilities, um, uh, uh, energy efficiency consumption for each of those facilities, which many utilities have access to these days. Uh, there can be some profiling of that energy consumption versus, for example, port, uh, Energy Star Portfolio Manager um, uh, benchmarks and so forth. But then um, in order to really get down to brass tacks, uh, you can also uh, tap into tax assessor, census data, uh, data sets from associations that can be used to more closely identify the specific opportunities and the size of those opportunities in target markets. And usually both those kinds of market-specific data as well as data that utilities have in-house about energy efficiency consumption need to be brought together to get a really refined perspective on uh, what is available in the marketplace. Isla, is there anything um, you have incredibly broad and deep experience in um, in selecting and deploying and course correcting for uh, uh, target market segments. Um, are there some things that you would add to that perspective on how to make those selections and how to integrate? No, I mean, I think you gave, I, I think really that assessment up front is such an important part because I think until you know what you're working with, you know, it's, it's really hard to then do, to build a plan. So I agree with the steps that you've laid out. And, and just encourage people to think about assessment first, because it's easy, I think, to grab a little bit of data or you know, and, and move forward. And, and you'll have some success, no doubt about it, because there's a lot of opportunity out there. But I think if you want to you know, really think about uh, spending your time wisely, then I think the steps that you laid out are great. Great. Um, then there is a second question for you, Isla, which is uh, what other segment-specific uh, 
programs are offered by Pacific Gas and Electric, and how are those going for you? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're, yes, we have uh, we have programs for our schools, uh, the public schools program, as well as uh, a couple of dairy programs, uh, two different implementers who are helping us implement a dairy program, as well as a hospital program and winery program. So those are some examples. Uh, with a hospital program, I have to say, hospitals are an interesting <laughs> group of customers to work with, and so uh, it requires the, the very long lead time type of programs because of all the uh, you know rules and regulations that they have to apply to. So that's a program that I think you know. At sometimes I think whether or not it's best would best be served by just a general utility program versus uh, this specific program because, uh, you know, we with the implementers we work with, they are paid on performance, and so it's really about delivering the savings. And so if you have programs that are very long lead time, you may not be getting the uptake as quickly as you would like in a cycle in order to, uh, you know, to be able to actually count the savings and be able to pay the implementer for them. So, uh, you know, that's something to think about when you're looking at, at, at working with the segment is, is there a, a ability there to really take the something and then move, move it quickly into production? Thank you. And then the second part of that question, if you would, was how are those programs that you're running going? And then, um, and then I would add to that, are there specific challenges uh, in any of those segments that are unique to them? Obviously, you know, every customer segment has its own unique challenges, but are there any particular ones that you wanted to identify um, with your dairy or hospital or winery or schools programs that uh, would be useful for our participants to uh, hear about today? Right. I, I think what with the uh – with the dairy programs, we were really struggling with those programs. Dairies in California in general have been struggling. And one of the things that really kind of helped start to turn that around is that we started offering the financing program. And we've, we've actually seen an uptake uh, now, you know, a, a lot of interest and then an uptake in activities related to the fact that now they have access to financing. So again, kind of understanding what's important to that customer, what are the barriers that are keeping them from moving forward, and uh, so with that program, we're kind of excited to see to see that going. With the schools, uh, and, and uh, they are a little bit different than the hospitals in the fact that most of the time they want to do some immediate things. So you really need to have kind of this journey with them about what are the first things you want to do. And then one of the more you know investment grade things that you want to do, and uh, so again, understanding the who the customer is, what really motivates them, and what the barriers or the parameters that they have that uh, that help you do that. We've had school programs for many many years in California, and uh, you know have had you know ongoing success, but it's not uh, it's it, it's not the kind of program that you're going to go in and and just. Uh, you know, unless they have been able to get some additional funding, uh, that you're going to be able to go in and I think do, move the market as quickly as you have done in, like, in the, the grocery program. Thank you for that. Um, I I just want to call um, call it a, a, an interesting um, piece of your uh, answer there, Isla. Uh, you mentioned the word journey. And um, we talked about how we start w in the grocery program with customers with sort of the low-hanging fruit that we identify and then move on to bigger, more capital-intensive and more complex measures over time. Um, one of the things that we, in talking to utilities really nationwide, um, there, is a, there is a universal desire to get deeper, more comprehensive savings. And... Um, the challenge always, but particularly in these economically straightened times, is that people are very cautious about putting money into their facilities, um, including sometimes even with a financing mechanism, not, not always, but um, you know, they don't know if they're going to be in business next month, next week, next year, and they often don't want to put a lot of money on the table until they can see that it works and that it can um, really transform the profitability of their business. So recognizing that there is a ramp-up time for, um, 
for really any program approach, obviously, but um, market segment approaches are, are no different there. It's the, it's the expression of that journey to the folks that you're working with in the marketplace so that they understand, hey, we're in it for the long run with you and partners is a really key marketing message um, for them. You hit the nail on the head there. Uh, next, let's take a couple of questions uh, from our uh, participants today. Um, first, um, there was a question about refrigeration and groceries and new construction projects. How do you establish a baseline? Um, have your efforts in this area been evaluated? If so, what were the results, net to gross and realization rate? So first, um, establishing a baseline for new construction uh, can, is, for, is of course a, uh, is a, usually a state by state exercise. Um, whatever the code baseline for building envelope, um, uh, fenestration and other things all have to be observed. And then um, as for uh, pieces of the building, equipment in the building that is typically not covered by code, so for example, in most states, there is little or no code that governs um, refrigeration systems, then what needs to be done is take a look at best practices in the region um, and what the availability of uh, the market is to deliver uh, sophisticated refrigeration measures, and then, and then a baseline has to be reconciled against those, you know, what's desirable and then what's actually doable in the marketplace. So it's really a case-by-case -case basis. Um, our efforts have are under evaluation right now, and um, so we don't have any net to gross uh, ratios uh, or, or realization rates at this time, um, but we expect to have some soon. And then there was a second question uh, related uh, to our field staff. Brenda, do you want to take that one? Yes. So the question was, who are the account managers, PECI staff, subcontractors, or specialists in the industry? And as I walked through the grocery presentation, as I referred to account managers, I was referring specifically to PECI staff, but I think that it could be more broadly applied to developing that expertise directly with utility staff or engaging with subcontractors uh, to recruit that specific expertise. And, and this is Isla. Let me just chime in on that a little bit because uh, one of the things that um, kind of relates to another question I saw earlier about, you know, avoiding uh, uh, coordination or how to avoid overlaps between programs is uh, we really view our account managers in the field that work with customers, the key, you know, key account managers, as uh, they look at the customer's needs holistically. And they, and because we have many programs that uh, are available to the customers, and try to help the customers pick and choose what works best for them. It's ultimately the customer's choice and not our account manager's choice. So uh, that's one way that we try to avoid the conflict is by, you know, ed the account managers then educate the customers and help them understand what's available to them. So, uh, so it, it is manageable. It's just that it is uh, something that uh, that you know, having education. I think that Brenda was talking about for our account managers as well as the account managers for the implementer in the field. The two of them working together really makes this come together. Thank you. I think we have time for one last question, and um, this one is for you, Isla. Uh, the question is. You know, often some overlap is inevitable. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. Uh, some overlap is inevitable due to legacy programs or things that maybe happened um, with uh, less scoping than everyone might desire. When that happens, how is it that um, PG&E adjusts to avoid overlap between programs? Well, uh, it's really, again, back to kind of the customers. It, you know, what, what are the customers' preference? If, if they already have a vendor or a program that they've had great success in working on it with, then we want to make sure that, that we honor that, and then we, then we want to educate them on what else is available. So um, I think that, you know, I, I have to say um, I don't – and we have really ran into, ran into this very little, I think, just because it's really about getting everyone on the same page, understanding who, what people have to offer, and then making it available for them. 
Okay, thank you, Isla, um, and thanks, Jeremy and Brenda, and all of you joining us for this presentation. Uh, we're going to wrap it up now. As you close out of the webinar, you'll be redirected to a short survey. Please take a moment to provide your feedback and let us know what other webinar topics you'd be interested in. Uh, look for a follow-up email containing market segment approach resources and a link to the recorded version of this webinar to share with your colleagues. Uh, look for more webinars on energy efficiency topics throughout the next year. Thank you for attending a market segment approach to commercial energy efficiency and have a great afternoon.